Hello, everyone, and welcome to Sea View Quantum Network. I'm your presenter, Daniel, and I'm here with producer Claudia Pareco. Our opening song features Sunset Serenade by Cyclone. Albums and singles are available in all music stores and platforms. A Moment of Your Time is one of the most extraordinary gifts we could ever be given. Each week, we create a place for you to rest your heart by providing the platform for peaceable connection to the most gifted light workers, intuitive, alternative healers who will surprise you with something different, something outside of what's expected, innovative and unique. Our shows are held on Fridays at 12 p.m. Eastern U.S. time and 9 a.m. Pacific time. At any moment to participate on our shows, please call 805-830-8344 and press 1 to talk with the host. Take My Call. At any moment before or during the show, you can opt for Take My Call and jump the long line of callers. We are now following the pay-what-you-can business model. You pay what you feel our services are worth to you. You can send a payment using paypal.me slash p-u-r-e-c-o and add the amount that you want. To request a show, please write to Claudia Pareco at cview1111 at gmail.com or visit our website cview1111.net Now, close your eyes and get in touch with the present, the only reality. Feel your body. Feel your breath. And let it drift back to the present moment. seems as if 
now things are changing at an accelerated rate. Um, I think the thing to be mindful of as we move forward is what we place our attention and intentions upon. So I noticed over the past couple of weeks as we were gearing into this show that I was feeling resistant to a number of things. And, and I am one that listens to the things happening around me. And I listen in a deeper sense. It's not not just with my ears. It's where I'm using every sensory ability this body's got. And when I say listening, it's, it's sifting through layers of information. And if you consider that empaths carry the, world, the weight of the world on their shoulders, then I'm listening to what is needed in order to restore balance here. And it, it felt like this topic was really important this month to focus on. So what, as Claudia had said, what we resist continues. And it brings more experiences into our life that will continue to mirror those patterns that we're stuck in that keep us from, from shifting our life into that magical life that we really want. So what I'll, I'll um, as we as we consider where we want to go, where we've been, what it is we want to do, what it is we've done, I want you to be mindful of that and consider that where you land, where you end up in your life today, tomorrow, the next day forward, it will be highly dependent upon your attitude and how you perceive life around you and how you act in that mindset of, that we're we're stepping away from being resistant and into a state of, let's just say, and I'll put in quotation marks, unconditional love, meaning being at peace with the things that are happening around us and then being in action with them instead of when we're in resistance, we're reactive to. So I'll I'll keep it simple. I'll keep it there. And we'll open the floor so that we have time to talk to every caller that's called in today. So, Claudia, whenever you're ready. Thank you, Nicole. So we have callers from m many places in the U.S. So we have in Connecticut, California, New York, in Arizona. Where do you want to go? Let's go to Connecticut. Okay. So let's go to Connecticut. We have Amla with us. Thank you for calling. Hi. How are you? Excellent. How are you, dear? I'm doing good. Thank you. So you have a so you're with that theme. What we resist persists. What is it that you'd like to know today? And and is there something that you're resisting in your life? Um, it's more like I'm surrendering. I think what's have patience level is is low. <laughs> so that's why me what I'm resisting. Um. There was there was a gap between the person I'm interested in and now. Um, it started like in November, and so I don't know. I don't. I just have this feeling intuitively. It's not over. It's just I don't know what. I'm just letting him be, but that's what I'm resistance if, resisting. If you to answer your question, I think the patience is just very low, and um, I know what I need to do, which is just surrender and let him reach out to me if that even happens. So I guess that's my question, though. Do you see him <laughs> reaching out to me? Okay. Well, <laughs> okay. So what I what came through as you were talking was a feeling of your energy being blocked. And the words can't see the possibilities were included in that. So it feels as if intuitively as, I'm, as I step into you, through you, and into your life, it feels as if the resistance is around being clear around what kind of person you really want to have in your life and believing that that's possible. So when I hear can't see the possibilities, it's that you're, and you resisting, it's that you're, instead of saying, okay, this is the type of person I want in my life. And he, and this is where you can sit down and, and do a wish list. I want this type of man that foot nine or six foot tall he can have hair, no hair, what hair color, what type of work you see him engaged in, like what you would love. If he were to come home from work, what kind of conversations would you have? Does his family love you? Do you love them? Do you are, is there a, 
sense of trust that you can go anywhere, be anybody, do anything you want, and the two of you be in absolute support of one another in a shared life. So it feels as if there's some, some I get a sense of settling, like settling and, and choosing this person and then feeling disempowered by the disconnect that you're experiencing. So if anybody, if we just take responsibility for ourselves, instead of pointing our finger at the other person or waiting for the other person to come around, what if you took control of your own life and said, this is the kind of person I want. You know what, dude, you don't mirror that image. You don't, yeah. you're, and you're not saying it to him, but you're, it's more you embracing your own power and saying, look, I deserve this kind of man in my life. No emotional baggage, no mental baggage, no physical baggage, or decide what you can and will be willing to deal with. Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes complete, it makes complete sense. I feel, you're right, I, I do feel disempowered in this mode that I'm in right now, this energy that I'm in right now. But um, one thing I will say, I like, he really does, you know, as far as him as a person, he is really what I'm looking for. I mean, we, I think that's why he, in a way, ran away, because he's just, it feels too real and too intense for him. He's not, and, and we both of us have been hurt in the past and blah, blah. But I've, I've healed, I, I think, yeah, I, I, I know he's worth it. I know that he is exactly what I'm looking for. And it's more the qualities. It's nothing to do with what he looks like anyway. I'm I'm more of a person who, like, do you have a big heart? Are you a deep thinker? Are you spiritual? Those are the things that I'm looking for. And and, and when he really he exudes that. He, he is that, you know, in, in just in our conversation. So, yeah. Okay, so if so, if he represents, if if what he holds inside of him is symbolic of what it is you're looking for, yet he's running away, then he's not prepared. Therefore, right. if if you take an egg out of his basket, and that egg is, I'm going to take this time to empower myself. I'm going to shift and do some more inner work because usually, if we if we attract somebody into our life that is running. There's an aspect of ourselves that isn't ready. So perhaps okay. you okay. focusing yeah. on on self development while he's off doing whatever it is he feels like he needs to do, then if he were the one to come back, then you can settle into your relationship. However, if for some reason the universe brings you someone else yeah. that is, then you'll understand where your resistance case like it has to be this guy. Well, what if it's not? Right. What if the universe has somebody better in for you, dear? Like, why why would you want to block that energy if there yeah. was someone that right. was so totally empowering and that wouldn't wouldn't walk away in the midst of chaos? Or you see, we you know yeah. when we're in relationship with people, and I think this is where relationships go wrong is when two people get together. One looks at the other and says, "Well, I see his highest and greatest potential," or vice versa. And if I wait long enough, this person will come around to my line of thinking or I can change them. I mean, if you don't enter a relationship and fall in in love, not just with yourself, but with the person that they are in that moment, not that that they can't change in the future, whatever. It's just you're not placing your focus on, well, I'm going to wait for him to change. Because if he's not the perfect guy, you're not the perfect girl, then... Send it out to the universe. This is a prayer that I use in affirmation. It's God, it's either this or something better. This yes. person or yes. something better. So if you and are in open, I think you're, you being impatient is like you know that there is something not right. Like there, the energy does, isn't a perfect match for you. So the impatience comes from the, like, I need an answer. I want it now or it has to be now. Yeah, or it has to be now. it's true. I do admit and that. I do admit that. And I think what yeah. you just did at the beginning with the disempowerment, like what what I'm hearing from you is just to like, and I'm doing it. I'm actually just, it's me time. I'm doing like things for myself and taking self-care and going to yoga and doing aromatherapy classes and, and getting a massage, which I never do. So like, I'm just pouring it all the love in for myself. That's what I'm doing. It feels and right. Because, and yeah. 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 
And it's very healing, very self-empowering. You're not disempowering yourself by giving your power away to this guy. I mean, that's like to, to feel as if I'm sitting around waiting for somebody. It's like, I can't breathe. It's like, why would I give my power away to somebody who wants to run? I myself yes. want people around me that, that gravitate toward me, that want to be in support of me, and I can be the same way with them. That's unconditional love. That's like you being in action with the universe as opposed to right. the, well, I'm just going to wait and see what happens. Bull. You know, why would you, I, I hate the thought of you doing that to yourself. So, and, but, and I say so and but. Yes. Focusing on self, falling in love with the innate wisdom that lives inside of the trillions of cells in your body, giving them what they need in prayer, in focus, intentional, inspirational. It has to be about you, and the, you need to see the magic in your life. So if you said, I want this kind of guy, and, and I will not settle for anything less. It's this this type of person or better. Yes. And know that yes. the universe is right there with you. It may be that you date a, a few different people in order to say, in order to be able to be honest with yourself to say, you know what, he's not, he doesn't, this one thing is a game changer. This breaks the deal. Like I will not yes. settle for somebody who puts me down, makes me feel disempowered, puts, pushes yes. me in a corner, you know, makes me feel like I'm less than who I am. It's so true. It's it it all breaks down to what I mean, non negotiables. I think that's what you're saying too. It's like is this yeah. is this is this worth it? Like is this something that I want? I mean it's it's not what the person says anyway, it's all what they do. That's yeah, I de- definitely learned that um the hard way from the other person I was dating whatever years ago. And so what are they saying? What is this what are they doing? And it's it's a huge difference, right? You know, people show you that they care. They don't tell you that they care. They do, but right. I mean, it goes with the action. It goes with the action. Yeah, and, and what if what if what you're destined for is far bigger than what that guy could handle? Do you want it, it, think about it, there's there's that way to look at it and then the other is we never know when the good Lord's gonna pull us off this planet and say, Okay, that's it, you know, you're gonna go off into it the next life and, and you're gonna learn these lessons and this is what's gonna happen. So we never know what, when it's going to happen. So why would we want to waste any of our time playing with, with small? You know, if, if each one of us is born onto this planet to shine light, to be a light for others, then why would we do anything that dims that light? Yeah. Yeah. So sure. I hope that helps. I hope it helps. Thanks. Thank you so much. It's so helpful. I appreciate you. You're welcome. God bless. Take care. Thank you, Anna. Absolutely. Okay, so now we're going to, uh, we have California, another Connecticut, New York, or Arizona. Arizona. Okay, let's go with Arizona. Melissa? Hi, ma'am. So glad you're in the show. I talked to you a few months ago. Do keep up with this nice show. You got the best people here. I am. Um, I I need some. Nice to meet you, ma'am. It's very very nice to be up there. Um, and thank you, Miss uh, Miss uh, Broadcast Lady. Um, so my question. I I'm important in my life where I I I have a certain things going on, and I I have a big assignment that I that I'm trying to make it happen. Um, and then I have a. Uh, great person that is uh helping me and he uh he helps me and uh but i feel that there's an i don't know if my trunk step forward here because there's a, a signal there that is uh in, into our business and claims to be divine and all that and she is projecting energy in a whole different way that i i i'm i i don't want to lose his help because he radiates high and I, I I wish to universe that to anybody else out there, I can't say much, but the divine understands this, that if please, um, I always, I do give to people who need money. I do donate. I do help people, even homeless. Uh, I'll, uh, I do help. I have gotten people off the street to get a home. I, so I do, I do do good things. 
Um, so my question is that, is he still going to help me? Uh, cause I think he's going to some form of frustration or something's happening that I can hear in his voice. And I really ask the divine that to please, whatever she's harnessing or, or meditating or channeling, is it doesn't seem to be in the highest divine light. And for for for, for, for the sake of many many people, that that be close closed off. It is of course a decision, not my decision, but I wanted just to express my my concern. But I I hope that he's still going to help me. That's my my biggest thing. Besides that, other question, can you please inform me? Okay, so I heard you say there isn't anyone else out there. Okay, so. With that statement and with our level of focus today, what we resist persists. There isn't anyone else out there. So the first thing that I would I would ask you to do when you when you think or say statements such as that, the question I would like you to ask yourself is, is that statement that I just thought or that I just said, is that really true? Okay? Now, let's shift our energy, shift our focus to his energy. What is his first name? Are you there? Uh, hello? 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 What is his first name? John. Can you spell that for me? J-O-H-N. Oh, okay, John. I'm sorry. So, John, you talked about a level of irritation or frustration or something and I could feel that but it when I focused on and when I stepped through you to his energy I kind of hijacked your thoughts to ride in to see what that felt like and I could feel irritation and the the word that came through was agendas and focus so it almost feels as if he's not clear enough on his his own agenda like he knows what it is he, he thinks he knows what he wants to do then take you who thinks you know what you want to do. And so you've got two people that are coming together. And what I heard in that energy is there's a lack of focus and a lack of clarity. So like you know you love to help, you know that you want to help, and perhaps as you two are working together, the, there's a theme that came up that I would love for you to write about, like journal about for yourself, meditate on, chew on for a little bit. And that, that term is dare to dream. And I have this feeling as you were talking that you're almost afraid to dream big. Like, like you're just, uh, it's like I know that you feel good when you do these certain things. However, there's, it, there's a lack of focus and intention. And when I think about that word intention and you getting focus, it feels like this powerful light just surges out of your solar plexus in your heart and out into the world. So the dare to dream is like see yourself bigger than what you have. Like you're just, it feels like you kind of sell yourself short and aren't getting clearer upon your vision. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. Um, so this, when it comes to him, the irritation that I feel coming from him is if you were clearer in your intention and you could dare dream bigger to dream bigger, then you could fine-tune whatever it is you're working on and hand him the things that you that the two of you are focusing on together. There is something, there's a piece here that's missing, an important piece of that puzzle. Can you put your finger on it now as we're talking about it? Yes. I feel you harness the, 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 the spot of, of the clarity. Okay. So do you know, like, with this project you're working on, what is it you are afraid, how is it you are afraid of being too big? Like, if you have had this vision, how much bigger are you in your vision than you are acting like right now? I wanted, I wanted to be big, but I was afraid that, that that money, excuse me, that if I think of my money, I, could create, I don't want to create karma for myself. So 
I think I'm having, I think I'm thinking it wrong. Like, yeah, I, you're, if you're I get money, I, when you're when you're in fear, of course, you said I, I'm afraid of the karma I might create. So you're afraid that you're doing something wrong already, and there's that that resistance. Okay, the universe pays attention to inspired action. So what the universe, it, the, it, look, the universe doesn't think about the I want or I don't want. The universe is very feeling. It feels our energy, the power that we put into our words and our thoughts. And if we put more power into the negative, then the universe says, hey, I never meant for you to feel that way. Never meant to live that way. Never meant for you to create anything in that kind of energy. However, if that's what you're going to think, then that's all that's all I can do for you. I'll keep creating experiences so that you experience that same stuff over and over and over again until you get it. So if the universe is truly a feeling universe and the universe loves inspired, big, powerful energy, joy-filled energy, all, A-W-E, when, you have, when you're in a sense of all, the magic happens. The universe is like, yeah, now she's in flow. Now she's got it. Now we can create. That's where you experience those magical things where failure is not an option. You don't even have to think about it. There's no worry or burden because really anything that we do, we're not failures. It's just we're just taking one step at a time. You know, we're learning. It's just like learning how to walk. We're learning how to live differently. We're learning how to think differently. We're learning how to send these commands out to the universe, like, I want to be in joy. So see your vision, your project, with a sense of awe and joy, and envision yourself in that, where you're igniting that energy inside of you so that the universe can grab it and show you the way, where the money is, where the, like, when you're in that state, nothing can keep you from the, from what you dream about. Nothing. So if this guy is not the right guy for the project, in prayer, you can say, okay, God, maybe I wasn't dreaming big enough. Maybe I wasn't daring myself like I wasn't stepping into that powerful vision you gave me where you inspired me with it to begin with. Therefore, if this guy isn't the right guy, then I, I demand that you send me the right person. And I'll give you a week, two weeks, three weeks to show me the magic. The universe loves it when we dare. It loves to get in and play with us that way. You don't have to be angry or fearful. It's just like think about a play, a child playing with the energy, playing with the universe. Shift your energy out of the fear, out of resistance. Dream big. Think joy. Um, Go ahead. Think. Real quickly, um, same thing with the uh, other, uh, the business uh, lady uh, projecting negativity energy towards my project. Uh, I've caught her, and I questioned. I said, well, I don't know why you're helping people. You need to first look at yourself because I can't do that to someone. Heck no. Well, then realistically, you don't even have to have conversations like that unless you want to keep that person around and you want them and they're willing to do their work. The lesson in that experience is really for you. That's where you get to cut bait and move forward is when you say, okay, they're not matching my energy. They don't match the energy of this project. Therefore, I need to let them go. So they're not responsible for this. It's your, this is, this is in your, on your plate, honey. And I'm not being judgmental. I'm just saying you can you can save yourself a ton of energy when you find people in your life like that where you could say, okay, they're not matching the energy that I'm holding here, and they're not going to be around while I'm working on this project. Therefore, I'll cut that I'll cut that cord. And it doesn't mean that you don't care about them, don't love them, don't wish them well. It just means that you're real clear about the kind of energy you're going to need to hold to get your your projects in. That's all there is to it. Have you noticed, Nicole, how we usually resist that which we want the most? Is that it's like we really want something and we resist 
to get that something because of what we already have, and we don't want to let go of that. So, so, so it's almost. It's to me, it's it's funny that we do it like that. Well, not funny, but it's it's sad, but it's funny, and we all do that. We resist to let something go that is preventing us to have something that we need. Do you think this is something that we are encoded for, like from like humans, or is it something that we learn from others, or why is it that it's there in every story that we find in our in our lives? It's always something that we are always resisting to let go. So there are two things that come to mind, and I'll focus here on animal totems before the show. Um, uh, Crow, Crow was outside my window, and Crow reveals the, the the medicine, the information behind Crow medicine. It reveals our inner world and our stamina, and it reflects transition and transformation. And it and it also shows us how acute and strong our foresight is. So, I would I would refer to Crow medicine. And if anybody wants to look up Crow medicine to dig a little deeper, you can. Um, put in a search engine, animal totems, comma, crow, C-R-O-W. The other animal that came through while you were talking, Claudia, was raccoon. And you could do the same thing, animal totems, comma, raccoon. Well, there's a story, a Native American story that goes with raccoon. And he is climbing a tree, and there's a hole in the tree, and he sees something shiny. So he puts his beautiful little paw into this hole, and all of a sudden, this trap springs, and his hand, his little paw is stuck. And he wants that shiny thing so bad, he won't let go. Well, the secret in that trap is that if he just released that shiny thing, he'd be free. So often we as humans, we, it's, instead of catch and release, right, the flow of the universe is catch and release. It's, we get something and then the universe brings us something else to fill its place. Like we, it brings us money and then we spend the money and then it brings more money. If you take your money and you hoard it, the universe is like, well, you're not spending it anyway. You're not, I'm not telling everybody to go off and, you know, be irresponsible with your money. But what I'm saying is, you know, when you're inspired to do something, the universe is showing you that there's more abundance there for you than what you have been, you've been letting yourself think about, letting yourself dream about. So in our humanness, we're, it's like, well, I have this, and this is how I pay my bills, and this is how I do my stuff. So I'm comfortable here. As much as I'm dreaming big and I could see myself in that moment successful and, and doing big things in this world, I'm afraid to let go of the old for fear that, that it won't be replaced by something bigger and better. So I think that's in our humanness. It's like we've gotten to the point where, all right, even in our, even in our being inadequate or even in being poor, or whatever it's that there's we've learned how to become comfortable in that so we never dare ourselves to be the bigness that light that the universe put us here to be and those are all learned behaviors i mean think about what our parents taught us how they lived the things that they had to live without i grew up hearing them saying money doesn't grow on trees well yeah, now too. i don't I don't look that way. I look at everything. I mean, I walk outside and I can look up in a tree and see usnea or gray man's beard and know that that is a natural antibiotic that I can use to help my body. And it has value. There, it's a currency to me. It's abundance. I can look in a tree and see an apple or even the pine, pine needles on a tree and know that there's medicine there. Or, you know, they're everywhere around us is abundance and prosperity, yet we fine-tune our energy. We're looking, we're scrutinizing abundance to the form of frog skin or whatever it is that's going to pay our bills or whatever instead of realizing that we could probably live without this this curtain of what somebody else considers financial abundance. You're right. So I hope I answered your question. You did. Thank you. So now we have, um, let's go back to Connecticut, and this is going to be Pat. Hi, Pat. Hello, Hello, Nicole. Thank you for creating such an incredible uh, website on Blog Talk Radio. You just 
your your hosts are just phenomenal, and that you and they give and give and give. Um, I'm glad I can say thank you to you. Um, yes, I do have a question, and <laughs> I'm often thinking about res- resisting. And anyway, I um, my mechanic blew my engine two years ago and finally did small claims court. And even though I did not get what I was hoping for, I actually won. I took myself maybe half a day to make myself realize I won because I was awarded money. Um, This man played really dirty. And um, now I have not received the payment. I called the, the court and they say, what you do now is you fill out a form and you get a marshal to attach it to his business bank. But if the marshal can't find the bank, good luck. I'm trying to find a way to kind of creatively work with this rather than getting upset. I actually did get pretty depressed initially because I'm just so, one, I'm so tired of dealing with this. Two years, I thought it would be over, and two, more energy. And anyway, I'm hoping yeah. that okay. I'm hoping so, create, um, one more thing. I'm hoping creatively I can find a marshal or a um, sheriff on my own to work with me rather than the forms. But essentially I'm hoping to get help and to get the money. Right. And how much money is it you want? Let's again let's if, if we step out of resistance and get really creative, how much do you want to see the universe bring to you? Well, I want the full amount that was awarded me, which is $2,102. It was awarded by a judge. It's a judgment. Okay. And, but how much, so that was the judgment. That's what the court awarded. But do you feel like you are, that you deserve more? Yes, because my repairs to his negligence went from about 3500 to 4000 Okay. That so was let's say a- for... Let's say four thousand dollars. Okay. Yeah. Or let's even be bold and say five thousand dollars. Okay. What yeah. if Pat look all right, let's just say because two thousand dollars, I mean to someone who doesn't have money, that's a lot of money. Someone who isn't attached to thinking small, and I'm not again, no judgment here, but this is all just getting intentional. This is about getting creative and playful and, and seeing the magic in life. Right. What if, let's just talk about in karmic debt terms, what if yes. in a past life you wronged him and you owed him and so he came back and wronged you, and this is, this is a hypothetical here, it's possible, however, let's just, this is to help shift mindset. So what if that two thousand dollars. What if you were meant to have far more than two thousand, and you're that like that raccoon with your paw stuck in a tree, thinking that that's all the abundance that you're allowed to create in your life? So, what if we shift focus out of you know what I deserve so much more. Therefore, if I wrong this man in a prior life, I'm going to send him good energy. Thank the good Lord for this experience and giving me the opportunity to pay back that debt. And now I'm going to disconnect my energy from him, and I'm going for the gusto. I'm going big. So, God, the universe, I need you to show me the magic, show me the money, get powerful in that statement, show me the money, and gift to me four or $5,000. Right. Show me where this money is. Now, I'm going to tell you a short story. There was a woman, a friend of mine, who uh, she wanted to get involved in something. She was really inspired by leaping in, and, and a gift of, of $5,000 was needed to leap in, but she didn't have it. But she knew she wanted to be into the, that particular thing that bad that she was willing to let the universe show her the magic. So she said yes to that, to leaping in, and a few days later, she was cleaning out her closet and found a shoebox with $5,000 in cash in it that she forgot she had put away. So instead of us being in judgment and saying, this is where our abundance has to come from, right. if you owed this man some energy in a past life or anyone, you know, perhaps he's just, he's just symbolic of 
of you giving back, releasing yourself from the idea of of that being all the money, all the abundance that you're meant to receive. And if I, so by you disconnecting and refocusing your energy path, perhaps he will pay. Now, I'll address the Sheriff right. and Marshall thing next, but I want to help you with the mindset because, remember, what we resist persists. Yeah. So if you help and yourself by praying, yep. then we can address the Marshall, the Sheriff thing. Now, what you can do, my husband's a retired police officer. So I know that you could go to the courthouse and you could file a lien on his personal property. You can put a lien against anything. You can put a lien against him so that he can't buy anything you do anything else unless you're paid first. He may never know that there's a lien on him until he goes to buy something and somebody says, no, you owe this person this debt. If he were to pass away, his, whatever is liquidated, you'd have to be paid out of it. So it okay. may be that maybe you don't get it today, right? but perhaps you get it at some point in the future. But right now, in order for you to experience more abundance in your life, you might need to let go of the way you're holding on to this. Um, I, I appreciate what you're saying. I, I have considered the fact that he might be angry now and he might change his main, main mind to finally pay me. I appreciate the information you just gave me. Um, someone else brought that up, and they weren't sure that could happen in Connecticut, but I will look into it, you know, placing yeah, a lien. Yeah, the thing That's, you could do is just call the courthouse. You don't have, it doesn't have to be the sheriff. It doesn't have to be the marshal. Just go right. to the courthouse, file the lien, and then and ask them. And you can even look it up on the Internet first. If for Connecticut, okay. what are the laws around people owing you money and fi- filing a lien against personal property or the person and how does that play out? Or go to the courthouse and talk to someone. They'll, they'll tell okay. you. You just be, be open, be kind, be willing to listen, yeah. be willing to ask more questions, and step out of that fear of he's not going to pay me. It's, but yeah. I think that if you, if you do that, then you disconnect from that energy, and then you turn to the universe and say, show me the magic. Show me that I can be far more prosperous than thinking, small, thinking this guy's the only way I'm going to get this money. Right, right. I... Um, I did work on, I, I did find out that he and I in past life has pl- have played this back and forth. Um, we've both been involved in doing this. And so I, I worked on the prayers and forgiving and forgiving him and myself and cutting cords and so on. So thank you. I've done that. I hope I did it well. And uh, yeah, I think, I think mainly the biggest thing was finding I have to go through this again. I'm just so tired from two years of many, many um, crises that it, it, it kind of really affected me emotionally that I'm going to have to do more work on this. Well, just remember, Pat, we can be our own worst enemy. Remember the term, what you're resisting, what I resist persists. So if you cut the cord, you say, you know what, then if I know that I'm swimming against the current, the natural current of the universe, and I know that I'm going nowhere, I'm I'm wearing myself out, thinking this way, living this way, acting this way, then I can release myself from this now. It, it doesn't mean, like I said, you're not following through. You don't do what the human thing to do is, which is to go to the courthouse, file the lien, and then let nature take its course. But I think you should be thanking the universe for this repeated lesson so that you can finally get it, so that you finally embrace that you're the one with your hand stuck in the hole holding on to something that you think is shiny and free yourself from it. And if by chance the universe gives you $5,000, then you can laugh your way to the bank, giggle all the way there, and let go of the idea that this guy will ever have to pay you and say, you know what, it was worth it because it was worth it that I had to learn my lesson this time. And let us know, Pat, if that happens, because that's a good story. <laughs> and so now let's go to New York. Let's bring Kim to the show. All right, Kim? Kim. With a T as in Tom. T T I M. Okay. Hi, Kim. Are you there? I am here. Thank you for taking my call. I really appreciate both of you guys uh, sharing your time, resources with people. Uh, 
it almost feels like I got the answer from listening to the other people or parts of it. Um, I am just looking to create some abundance and pivot into something new. Uh, don't know exactly what that is, you know, so uh, that's caused anxiety. It's kind of caused me to just feel like I was stuck working a job that's paying the bills as opposed to doing something that I enjoy, love, or paying me more money. I heard you say that inspired action is necessary for the universe, and uh, I've definitely been saying my manifestations and things of that nature, but the inspired action part hasn't happened just because I'm like, I don't know what to do. So obviously I have to do something. I'm just trying to pivot away from, uh, I guess, fear-based bills and worrying about that and uh, move into this next phase of bringing these things in. So uh, I'm going to listen to the broadcast because you gave everyone excellent advice, which I think pertains to me. But any advice you have for me would be greatly appreciated. Absolutely, Tim. So the thing that I feel is just your energy being stuck, uh, the perception of, is this all? Is this all there is? And it's like, if this is all there is, then why am I doing this? So there's that, it feels very, like my heart feels heavy. I feel disheartened when I, as I step into that energy. And the thing that, the word that came up is interestingly is the word dance, D-A-N-C-E. And it feels like by you stepping into movement, flow, laughter, play, you know, it, if you're not experiencing joy in your life, again, if all you're doing is working and paying bills, what's it all for, Tim? Uh, it's all for nothing. So if when I said the word dance, movement, flow, laughter, and play, if you knew that you could just set one hour per day for you to move, flow, dance, laugh, play, do something fun, what would that be? Um, move, dance, flow, one hour a day. Uh, I guess I don't know yet. I have to figure that so would it out. be you go to the local animal shelter and play with puppies or kittens, or would it be that you sign up for a dance class or a painting class somewhere where you could throw paint on a wall in buckets or you know something where you can laugh and play? What comes to mind? Like, what do you love when you think about loving life? What comes to mind? The first thing that came to my mind is playing ping pong. It's something I used to do with uh, some friends I used to play. We'd always go and have a good time. Uh, that doesn't happen now. Life's changed for many people, but uh, just playing ping pong, which sounds weird. I don't know if that's the right answer or this is the thing where there no, is no right not answer, at all. But, not at all. Okay. Actually, there is no right, there is no wrong. It's just focus. So instead of mm-hmm. resisting and staying in resistance, being stuck, you know, just work it day in, day out that you ignite the energy and use it to, you know, connect with old friends or even if you had to play by yourself. Imagine setting up, like, make or do something fun. You know, it makes me think of, um, I keep seeing colors for some reason, like paint, all different colors paint, colors of paint. And in my mind, I was thinking when you said ping pong, I thought, oh, well, that would be kind of cool. Throw a, a canvas or a sheet on the wall set up half of a ping pong table against it, put a bunch of paint, like dip your ping pong thing in paint and and hit that canvas and see what kind of really cool stuff you can create. But the other part is it makes me think of, um, you know, those drum rooms where they put paint on the drums and they it, they glow in the dark and you, uh-huh. you whack on them and the paint goes everywhere. It's like this careless abandon for being an adult and letting yourself play. I feel like that's really what that's symbolic of. Okay. So if, it. if it's not a stretch to call your friends and set up ping pong, that is a really great place to start. Okay. Okay. And I have been journaling. Like, and you can, by you, by you invoking that energy, that playful child <laughs> side of yourself, letting yourself be, live life and and be in laughter and joy, it opens the door. It, it One, it gives the universe time to help you create new streams of revenue, new abundance in your life. It, it's like you, it, because you, when you're so focused on, I have to pay bills, I want more money, I want this, I, it, you're doing all that, the universe is going, 
but we need time to make some things happen. And go play. Like, go outside and play. And by giving the universe that time, magic happens. I mean, sometimes you just need, maybe it's just being with friends and they get creative and you guys get inspired to build, grow, or create something. Okay. So there's okay. something about being more playful instead of more, instead of resisting and thinking that this is all there is. Because I, I see you, I see your energy as being much bigger than, than what you're allowing for yourself. But laughter is definitely needed. More laughter. More laughter. Okay. I got it. Thank you so very much. You're welcome, Tim. And let us know how you do. Feel free to stay in touch, okay? I will indeed. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you, Tim. Okay, so now we have New York, California, or Florida. Just pick one. Okay. Let's see what we can do. I pick the one, or you pick the one? You pick the one. Okay. Let's, <laughs> let's go with Cindy from Florida. Hi, Cindy. Hello. Hi, Hi how are you? Excellent. I hope you are. Yes, very much. Um, I missed the very beginning of the show um, because I, I, I tuned in late. I called in late. I'm at work. <laughs> But um, okay. I was wondering if you could give me any insight on someone new that I just met. And a, a friend of mine, uh, is it, it was their cousin, and they called me over and wanted me to meet their cousin that was mo- visiting from California and getting ready to move here. And his name is Rick. And I was wondering if you can give me any insight on this person um, and as possible um you know we hit it off really well they invited me over again for dinner tonight and um i was just wondering if you pick up anything where that might go or if that's something okay so harder okay all right so uh there was a word that I heard straight off as you started to talk about him, and I felt this energy coming out of your body, like you were putting your hand up, like holding your hand out in front of you like a stop, kind of like saying no, and the word was no. It feels like through the cousin, like the cousin wanting this person to have a good life, wanting Rick to have a good life or to do something different or to try on something different, but it feels as if, whatever patterns and behaviors they've created would, it feels as if it would create some resistance in your life. Now, my my thought, my suggestion is when you go to dinner tonight, ask questions and be mindful. Like be, to be in conversation, be yourself. Don't worry about who he is, what he is, whatever. I think If given enough time, he will reveal whatever this is where I see you putting up your hand going, no, it's okay. You know, that's, it's not, that's not, they'll help you create the energy that you want to get focused on the person, the person that you want to have in your life. And I think that's part of the show that you actually miss. And that great that the shows are recorded. So you'll be able to go back and pull that recording and listen to it. Okay. So you can get really clear about the kind of, mate and companion you want to share your life with. But I think that the more time you spend with Rick and getting to know him, you'll you'll see the the patterns of sabotage in his life okay. and and his resistance to change. So I don't feel like he matches your energy, but I think that this is a great experience for you. I wouldn't say deter to steer away from going to dinner. I'd say go to dinner and learn to you know, be in communication, ask questions playfully, being yourself, yet being real clear that when you hear, when you see those red flags, you hear those things come up, then you'll know not to proceed. 
So for some reason, just let's be clear. Okay. When you were talking about him, the word no came up. But don't don't take my word for it. I, I think that the experience okay. itself will help you find clarity to move forward. So we don't okay. have to be resistant. We just have to be intentional and focused. That's all. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome, dear. Good luck. Enjoy. All right. Thanks. Okay. Bye-bye. Thank you, Cindy. Okay, so we are four minutes away from ending. Do you have time for one more? Yeah, let's go ahead. Let's see what we can do. Okay, so we're going to bring Kat from New York. Hey, dear. Hello. So oh. much for taking my call. You're welcome. How can we help you today? I have a similar question to the last caller. Um, there's a, a man I like named Marco, and I was wondering if you see any possibility there of us connecting. Please. Okay, so the words playful, laughter, air, airy, like A-I-R-Y, like I can breathe, uh, being outside, um, in movement, like I feel, I feel you out walking out, and it, it's not just about sitting around. This is like being in movement. So perhaps the as you're getting to know Marco, that you um, stay active. I feel like that's the key, staying active. I feel like there may be some propensity to get caught up in life stuff and let the energy stagnate. But I think it being at play, you know, being in movement together, doing things together, um, not just sitting around humdrum, you know, boring life stuff, is to get focused on what do we want different, what do we want in our lives that that makes life feel enjoyable and worth living, and do those things together. So it feels like activity, being focused on activities. If it gets boring, it feels like one or the other of you, it, it's like you lose the energy. It, it's like I feel like there's a, the energy can stagnate unless you're in movement together, doing things together. Yeah. Well, thank you. So how has your relationship been so far with them? I know we only have another minute or so. Um, well, what happened was is I met him uh, overseas. And I want to try to reconnect because um, I was being very shy and, um, I guess, protecting of myself. So I'm going to try to reconnect with him because, like, I feel like, you know, that was just my baggage at the time. Yeah. So light and airy. Consider movement, you know, being in movement in flow. And that works. It could be that Marco won't handle because he, if he's overseas, um, it may be that he needs more movement in his life, but just this may just be a catch and release kind of experience, like you playing. If it's meant to be more, the universe will show you. So you'll know, but I, I, I can't say keep yourself from having the experience. I didn't feel like there was any no or any roadblocks. It's just, you know, be clear on laughter, fun, play, keeping things light, airy. You know, don't, don't let it get heavy and burdensome is the way it's showing up. It's just being mindful. You know, don't be resistant. Right. Just be mindful. Oh. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, I could relate to that. Yes. You're well, welcome, dear. Thank you. So. Enjoy. So we have reached the end of today's show. And um, Nicole, can you give us just a little bit of what we are to expect on your next show on Friday? On Friday, on January, um, the last Friday in January 2023, what are we expecting to listen to? Okay, so it may be some bigger stuff. Um, it may be some things that we have been resistant to over the past couple of years I have been I've noticed myself resisting like I've gotten messages from the universe I wrote about them in my first book on sacred time where where I was told that all of these things were going to be happening and they already have been and are happening and I've been resistant to discuss them 
Um, the way I work in my life is I straddle the fence and look at both sides of everything, the good, the bad, the ugly, everything, and then determine how to be in action with bad rather than being resistant to what's happening in the world. And so I, I love to research and investigate. So what is happening in January, my fingers are crossed that it'll go down in January, is that I'll be launching my next book, C S E E. And and potentially launching the platform with it where I'll be allowing large quantities of people to come in and I'll I'll be doing just what we're doing with the radio show, but to be able to help them assess their lives, give them answers, be able to go into the platform, learn how to develop their own intuitive skills and abilities, and totally shift the way people are thinking where they're caught up in the negative, the bad, and not seeing that good things can still happen even in the midst of, of chaos and change. So you can look forward to next year us talking about some difficult, having some difficult conversations or seemingly difficult conversations, but be mindful that I'll be looking at both sides of the fence, the good, the bad, and then looking at what good can actually come out of the things that we've been enduring over the past couple of years. So, um, that's where we are. I look forward to it. I am nervous about it. However, I mm-hmm. am not going to stand in resistance. I'm going to, I'm going to step in and and let the light shine and see what happens. And I will be there with you, as as, as always. Also, trying not to resist myself because we all can work on that. And probably, as we said before, and we have listened to all the callers. We all have the system, and we are so ready to let them go. And thank you, everybody, for being here. Happy holidays. Talk to you uh, next month, Nicole, and enjoy your time with family and friends. Thank you, everyone. Happy holidays. God bless.